Alright, so in week in this week, um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a little bit more look at loops, and specifically we're gonna be focusing on a for loop. So what I want to do is I want to take my loop practice, I'm gonna leave my scanner there. So let me undo this. Um, I'm taking a previous example here. What I want to do is, um, for right now, I'm not going to use Scanner. And of course, don't need this. But um, what I want to do is have an integer, and I'm just demonstrating here, an integer, let's say, called x, which starts at 0. And I want to do something while x is less than 5. What am I going to do? I'm going to print this guy. I guess I can't do that. Print. I'm just going to print the value of x. <clears throat> and of course I need to change the value of x. So I'm going to increment x using the increment post increment operator. And this ends my while loop. So I'm go ahead and give this a run. So this is nothing that we don't already know. We already know what all this is. And, oh, I have an error. Oh, don't have the semicolon. See, even I make those mistakes. So what does this do? Is this should print x is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it is displaying the value of x starting from 0 and going up till when it is 4, when x gets to 5, this is no longer true and it will end the loop. So this is nothing we don't already know. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a counter-controlled loop. Um, so we can take the same concept and convert it into a for loop. So what we can do is we can take the three main parts of a loop, a start, a stop, and a change, because it starts, the x starts at 0, it stops when it gets to 5, and it changes by 1 with each iteration of the loop. I can create this exact same loop, <coughs> excuse me, I can change, create this exact same loop with a for loop. So a for loop in Java is essentially a condensed way to do any other kind of loop. I can say I have an integer called x that starts at 0, and we're going to continue to do this while, or the way I like to think of this, for as long as, for as long as x is less than 5, and our change value is going to be incrementing x by 1, or changing the value of x by 1. So the three main parts of the loop still exist. We have a start, a stop, and a change value. Start, a stop, and a change. And we're just displaying. So this we should do the same thing as we saw before. And indeed it does. Exact same thing. So what is a for loop? A for loop is a really good way to do a counter-controlled loop. You can use for loops for user-controlled loops. A user-controlled loop would be, like for example, a scanner, um, using a scanner to get an input from a value from a user so like for example, let's say here I'll show you a user control loop. Because you can do user control loops with for loops, but they're much better with while loops. So let's say I ask the user to give me I say something like um, enter a negative so I'm asking the user to give me a negative number. And I'm going to need scanner, and I'm going to need a variable to get their entry. I'll just call that num. So I'm going to say, well, every time the user gives me a number, I'm going to store it in num, and I'm going to use my scanner to get the next int, capital I. <coughs> and what am I going to do? I don't need x anymore. So I'm showing you a user control loop here. So here I'm going to say that um, I'm going to continue to do this while num because I want them to give me a negative number. 
So I'm going to keep asking them to enter a number until they give me a negative number. So while they're not giving me a negative number, while num is greater than zero, while it's greater than zero, I want to continue to ask them for a negative number. So this would be an example, and I'll go ahead and run this in a moment. This would be an example of a user control group. <coughs> Actually, I probably, I don't know, zero is not going to be So while it's greater than or equal to zero. So what this should do is, this is user control. It's going to say, hey, and our negative number, um, eight. Nope, that's not, oh, well, what do you do? Some kind of a boo boo on this up right again. Okay, and a negative number, 8. Uh, I can't spell negative, sorry about that. And a negative number, 4. No, what about 0? No, how about negative 7? That's a negative number. So this is going to continue to run over and over and over again until the user gives me a negative number while their number is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so <clears throat> the main focus here, I just want to show you what a user control loop is. The main focus here is a for loop. So a for loop is really, really nice for a counter control loop when you know how many times you want to run the process. You can do a for loop with user control, but I think it's much nicer for counter control input. So all loops have some kind of start end and a change. And this for loop is set up really nicely to run with a counter control value. So the literature that you're reading for this week is going to talk about what is repetition, what is loop, the for statement. Want to make sure you read through that. I'll talk about that. There's some other loop examples. We've actually already seen some of this before in the previous week. Um, we're also going to talk about text files. I'm going to make another video that will talk about that because that's a little bit more complex. So this is focusing on what are for loops. And I also just threw in, just to make sure you guys are clear on the fact that loops are generally categorized into user control loops or counter control loops. And for loops are really nice for counter control loops.